video, I showed you the universal support and how we can do the inserts and what the cam nuts uh, are required and also the M3 bolts that are required uh, in order to hold the rods into position. In this video now, we're gonna start talking about the X-axis. So the X-axis essentially, that's a completed unit with the bearings inserted in and the belt already on it. But on the STLs, you should have printed it off in two halves. So you'll have part A and part B, and then you should also have had these uh, circular components as well, which uh, are required in order to make the joints. If you haven't got these, uh, what you can also use is one of the Indus bearings. Um, so we'll pop the one bearing in first, then we'll pop another bearing. And if we just completed, continued that, popping the bearing, see there's a nice snug fit and then the other and then we put the other bearings into here and line it off clip it together and then what we can do is holding it together we can run a hot solder knife just to complete that seal now a few people have complained about the use of it uh, the usability of that and why can't we complete it all into one complete unit now the reason why i was printing in two separate halves was so um, I didn't have to use any support material and essentially I was trying to increase also the build time. What I have done though is I've re-looked at this uh, x-axis now and I have come up with a complete one piece design which is this unit here. So it's printed downwards, we've really maximised the, the overhands on what we can achieve. Same again so I can print this without any support material whatsoever. So it is printed in this direction and now it is just one for the left hand side, one for the right hand side. But also the beauty of this unit is we've still got the stops at the end which stop the, uh, the bearings, the bushes from coming out. But also the tolerances on this now, if we do grab a bearing, uh, we're able to just snap that nicely into position. And same again, snap that nicely into position. If you've already downloaded the STLs and printed this version, that's entirely up to you, you can carry on building. Measurements wise and everything else is exactly the same still. Uh, it's just the fact that this has been totally modified to do this in the one complete, uh, in the one complete section. But also these STLs will also now be uh, uploaded onto the STL fire pack, a uh, file pack, sorry. So you can, uh, uh, it will be replacing this unit uh, with this uh, one piece unit for the X axis. Now, sticking with the x-axis, you can see here we've got these grub screws uh, which essentially close up against the rods. So when we insert the rods into these, when we're ready to tighten everything up, we can tighten up the grub screw to lock down onto the rod. So, these grub screws. Essentially, the grub screws are still M3 grub screws, uh, but we, uh, they're approximately 10 millimeters uh, in length and like I say the thread is an M3 thread. And all you need to do uh, essentially is, uh, if I grab one of the new pieces, I'll use it on there. So it's a little bit the uh, same again, we tried to get the tolerances just right on these, so the thread We'll make a thread with the friction going in. And we screw that all the way down and just leave that uh, uh, to cool down a little bit. And like I say, the friction helps to create some of the thread. Now in total, you'll need uh, two for the left-hand side and two for the right-hand side. Basically, wherever there's a rod, they'll need to have the locking uh, in screw. So the locking grub screw, M3, 10 millimeters in length. Okay, it's the same uh, locking screw as well, which is used for the uh, Z rod mounts. So same again, that's a universal file. It's the same file, and you just print this component out four, uh, four times, and it holds the rods in at the bottom, and the rods in at the top, and you just basically position those in. But same again, what you'll need to do is have your M3, 10 mil 
grub screws and just screw them in. And what I do is just clean off some of the burr plastic and same again, just leave that just to pull down a little bit and remove the mouth. So you want to repeat that now on, there's two uh, locking screws uh, for the Z rods, so uh, one on each part and repeat that four times over all of the uh, Z rod mounts. Now that we've uh, got those components built up, um, I'll just quickly show you as well how we would mount those. Oh, sorry, before I do that, I'm also going to include another version of the supports. Now what we're going to do with these supports is we've continued the hole through. If you look on the uh, existing supports that you've printed off, um, you'll have the four holes there. What we've done is continued those through um, and then made it so a bolt can nicely seat into there. And the whole idea of this is what we're also going to build with the uh, with the S series is we're going to do away with the with the Y uh, motor mount altogether. And uh, whilst I'll, I'll be doing through this build and showing you how to mount this, but simultaneously I'll also be doing another build um, without this on altogether. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use two. Uh, of the motors uh, and we're going to join them together and so essentially the motors will run directly on the supports totally doing away with this centerpiece the rod and the bearings all together um, so this model has also now been included on the STL download and you'll see that because it will have the holes coming all the way through and that's so you've got the two to two variations that you may want to do you can even invest in having another stepper motor paired up having two stepper motors running together uh, in order to, to be able to pull the Y axis uh, up and down uh, or traditionally go with the one stepper motor with the rod and the bearings and, and so on and so forth in order to do that connection. So that's just one more thing I wanted to have. Now as with the other previous videos uh, and the version one of the print table, essentially everything is still exactly the same in terms of cutting your hole out of the centre. So you measure uh, approximately 55 millimetres all the way around uh, and you do that on both faces and cut that out with either a sharp uh, knife, sharp blade uh, or even uh, um, a little um, jigsaw type saw. Uh, just anything you, that can get you a, a nice cut. So from that We'll actually just quickly now show you how we're going to assemble the pieces together. So from the previous video, I showed you we had the uh, cam screws. So those will just screw into the corner holes which are already there pre-drilled by IKEA. So we've got the four screws on all of the ends, the, uh, the four hand screws. And then what we're going to do is I'll show you uh, with the new set of blueprinted parts that I've got. So the whole idea is, is to have this face always facing inwards uh, and obviously look at what your outward one's going to be. So facing inwards, we can pop that into position. Now you'd have the grub screws in there, so what we can also do now is we're placing two of the longer rods.
Okay, now depending on which version of the uh, X axis or uh, which you're going to be running, um, we'll insert the shorter rods in. I just need to loosen off that drop screw. Okay, so those two are in on the x-axis. Now at this point, we will need to insert in some of the uh, bearings, uh, bushes, for the printhead. Now, the printhead also has now been improved. Okay, so what we've now got with the printhead is we've got uh, this version here, which can go in and out uh, without having to disassemble anything, but all we need to do is just make sure we put the bushes on first. So if you're using this new type of printhead, which same then STLs will be loaded up onto the download files. Um, alternatively, you can best to show you on this version whereas if you were using the currently loaded up print ver table version you would have this one bring that up, which would have four same again I mean this you can totally remove anyway uh, it's just the fact that this one has the four bearings in and uh, and the new the new type one has three bearings Now people keep criticising as to why do I keep changing the print table, but the reality of it is these are all the improvements that I'm making as time goes by. I want to decrease the part count, I want to increase the reliability of the machine and increase also um, uh, the way in which it prints, the accuracy of the print, but also make it even easier to work on disassemble, reassemble and make modifications. So it's essentially what you should do is just see all of these as just all modification and you can choose yourself to have this x-axis, choose to have this new type of single piece x-axis, uh, have the single motor, have the dual motor. It, it really is, I'm just, I'm just displaying all the different possibilities of how you may want to build the print table. So, for this version, um, it'll only need the three. And because of how the motor mounts onto that, uh, I know that it mounts up on this way, so the two bearings will always sit next to where the motor housing is, so that rod will have the two bearings on, and the other one, just the one. So we're down to three now, then I'll have the other part. Okay, so that's the uh, unit assembled. I haven't got all the drub screws in place at the moment, uh, but um, that's what you should be doing, is getting the drub screws all into position, ready uh, to accept the rods. This is really just to show the assembly of it. Obviously, I know this to be uh, the top, if you like, so facing the hole, these are always pointing downwards, everything's upside down, so I will position it that way. I'm going to have in the motors at, the, at this end, I'm going to be doing the dual motor on this, so then that will be facing that way around. I can now slide that into position. Just thread the rods into play. Okay, I'll just take these ones out of this side actually to make it easier to thread through. So thread rod threaded, rod threaded, now I can just open that, get the rods lined up, push those in, push those in, okay. and you can see there I've always already got the one set up with the motor on it, so Facing inwards, pop that on. 
it back into position onto the cam lock. Pull the cam down. And I just need one of the other blue ones, which I believe is that one with the holes already pre drilled, ready to accept the motor. One of the cam locks into position on that one. Cam, cam, cam. Okay, at this point now, I can lock these cams down. Screwdriver. Okay, so that's now the cam lots locked down, and I've got the position on there. So essentially, I could now tip that the right way around and put it onto the table. What I am going to show you, whilst I've got it into this position, so when it comes to doing the build up of this, uh, what we will now have is essentially, we slide it over, it, that clips into there, we've now got a tightening screw here so we can set the tension of how this travels, and then other than that, the actual belt itself locks through uh, two M3 bolts here, and uh, this is also the housing still for the core leaf fan and it will clip up onto the bottom and bolt through and it will clamp that all the way through uh, and essentially that becomes everything for our print head okay so that's just showing you that in position i'll just set that back out okay and we can just set that off completely now whilst we're in this stage here, we've already got some holes pre-drilled, but I'll show you again anyway, is we grab the supports that we've got. And this is gonna be the blue color, so I'll use these blue ones. And essentially they will fit into the corner and into the corner there with the motor facing towards the back. So I know that that is the back. And to fasten those in, I will just use some normal self-tapping screws. Just anything self-tapping. Really, you want to be using a, a flat head uh, to screw it down and tighten it down, uh, and that's to enable uh, it not splitting the plastic as you are screwing them in. And I'll just show you on two on there. So we just tuck them in nicely into the corner. and again, nicely into the corner. Okay, next we're gonna go, uh, go on to uh, the base and start building the legs up and making a complete unit and start then looking at how we'll start threading the wiring through and start fitting some of the main components. Thank you.